Hi there. We're going to talk about Gantt charts today. And Gantt charts is one of my um, my very first video topics. And surprisingly, it is the video that is doing the best out of all of my videos, which really surprised me because you don't really consider Gantt charts to be a um, any kind of focus in Power BI. There's not really a good visual option to do them. And in, in that video, we covered um, the Microsoft custom visual, so the free one, to do a basic Gantt chart. And the problem with that visual is that it's um, the milestone functionality I could not get to work. But there is someone named David Bocci who posted a link in the Power BI subreddit. If you aren't familiar with the um, Power BI subreddit, I highly recommend it. It's a really great resource for people that have questions about things. But um, so David Bocci posted his Deneb template in this subreddit, and it is one of the most popular posts in the last year. So he um, he did a really great job with this Deneb template. And the thing is, if you scroll through here, it, I, I could not find anywhere, including in his GitHub, any instructions for how to use this thing. So he made it open source. It's available to anyone to use. It's just that you're kind of on your own as far as figuring out how to set it up. So um, this video is going to walk us through how to use this Deneb template. And if you're not familiar, familiar with Deneb, it is a, um, it's an open source visual that is a certified visual. So um, you don't have to worry about that. It's also free, but it is a tool with a learning curve for sure. And I am not an expert in Deneb, but I figured out enough to get this template working. So we're going to go through how to do that. So David has a link to his GitHub in this post. I'm going to put this link in the video description, but essentially um, he's got a bunch of really cool Deneb templates in here. So if you're not familiar with the Deneb, just definitely um, scroll through and check these out. They're super cool, but we're going to be using the Gantt chart version today. That's at this folder here. So if you want to open up the Gantt chart folder, there's a Gantt.pbix. And I ended up not needing any of the rest of these files, particularly I thought I would need the spec.json, but the thing is, is that this file has the data that is in the screenshot in the post in it, meaning it's really hard to adapt to your own data. Whereas if you use the gantt.pbix and copy some code out of the visual in there, it's a lot easier to adapt to your own data set. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to download this and the download button. If you're not familiar with GitHub, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of hard to find. So it's this one on the far right over here. We're going to download that. All right. So what you're going to want to do is select the visual in his PBIX and then go to this three dot menu up here, the ellipses, and then go to edit. And what this does is it brings up the Deneb settings. So I'm going to copy the specification JSON here. So just do a control A and a control C or however you want to copy it. It looks like right clicking doesn't work. So got to go with that. And then we're going to go over to our file. So in my PBIX, I have a table of tasks. And the thing that I noticed when I was trying to troubleshoot getting this up and running is that the Deneb template is very particular about your field names. So you don't have to rename them in your data model. You can rename them in the visual. So um, when you drop them in this values well here, you can double click on them to rename them. But they do need to be named the same thing if you do not want to modify the JSON. Um, in my opinion, it's easier to just rename your fields than it is to go through and read through the JSON and update everything in there. Um, but whichever you like is totally fine. So we're going to need to use the Deneb custom visual here. So go to the get more visuals menu and then go to the app source here and just search for the word Deneb, D-E-N-E-B. And it's a certified custom visual, so that's cool. And so we're going to use that. And click Add. I already have it, so I can't add it. But um, it'll show up in this extra, extra section down here. So add that to your page. And then we need to add our fields to this visual. So I'm just going to click through 
um, what order were they in over here? Let me open it up over here. All right, so we want task, start and end date. And the thing with the start and end date that I noticed is that it really wants you to have a start and end date. So um, the null values thing is a problem. Looks like I forgot to turn off the date hierarchy. So let's pop that. Start and phase. And the phase values can be whatever you want. So phase is just a text field. You don't have to use the same phase names as we're in the example. You can use your own. And then milestone. So milestone is a true false field. So is this milestone yes or no? And the milestones are just single date points. So you want the start and end date to be the same. And then ID, dependencies, and completion. And you'll notice that I've turned off the auto summarization. So if you drop your ID in here and it's automatically um, trying to count by or whatever, you can just change this to do not summarize. Okay, so now if we go to the ellipses menu and go to edit, it'll pop up a menu. And you do need fields in your visual for this to pop up. I, um, I got very confused why I couldn't get the settings window to come up. You need, your, need the fields to be in there first. And then what we're going to do is I, I had thought that import from template was what we wanted to do, but it's not, so don't do that one. If you try and import that JSON file, it actually gives you an error. In the Vega tab, click on this empty one. So this is a bare minimum Vega template. So this is an empty template. We're going to use that and then click Create. And then we get this kind of familiar UI that we were looking at in David's file. So we're going to paste that JSON that we copied earlier into here. And then click on this apply button up here. And that will make our Gantt chart appear on the right hand side over here. So you'll notice that um, the null values appear kind of odd in here. So like for progress, if you have something that has no progress, instead of having it be blank, it would probably be better to just put 0%. You'll notice it just says null percent, which is kind of awkward. And the other thing you'll notice is that the dates have the day number first and the month number and then the year number. So um, in, in the United States, typically you'll see the month number first. So we want to modify the JSON slightly to adjust for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a text editor. Um, so I'm going to do notepad. I'm going to paste the JSON in there and then do a find and replace on it. So if we scroll, I'm just going to do a control F to search for the word date to find where the date formatting is. That's not the right one. Let's see here. Here we go. Here's one of them. So you'll see that the date formatting looks like this. So it's got the percent %D, percent %M, percent %Y. That's the day, month, year. So we're going to do a find and replace on this to swap out. I'm just going to copy and then do and then do a control F to do a find. And the, the UI on this may be a little bit different depending on what text editor you're using. But I'm going to click on this little um, widget over here to open up the replace menu. And we're going to find this and replace it with percent %m slash percent %d slash percent %y. And if you do replace all and then copy this and paste it back into the specification settings, we should be able to update our date format. And you do need to push this apply button in order to get it to update. And there we go. So our dates are formatted the way we want. So now if we click on back to report, we have our Gantt chart. And just to go back over a little bit about how the data is formatted. So if I go back over here, you'll see the dependencies column is a number and that's the ID of the thing that is um, that it is dependent on. So for example, this row numbers and um, number ID number nine is dependent on ID number seven. I'm not sure if this will take multiple values or not. It's called dependencies. So one would expect that it takes multiple. I haven't tried it. So maybe we'll try it at the end of this video and see what happens to us. Other thing you want to note is that the completion percentage is a whole number out of 100. It's not out of one. So make sure to um, 
have that in the right format in your um, data source. All right, so let's see what happens with our dependencies if we have multiple. So let me open this up. This is my source file. I'm going to try comma separating this. Just about six too. I don't even know what six is, but it sounds good. All right, so I'm going to save this. And refresh. Okay, that just took out the comma. That's weird. Oh, I see. It's my type change here. So let's let's take this out so that it's not trying to change it to a number because it's got a comma in it. So it should actually be text. All right. Now what's going to happen? Let's see. Oh my gosh, it worked. So you can see that both of these are dependencies for this task now. So it looks like comma separated is the way to go. Just make sure that your uh, format for that column is a text um, field if you are comma separating multiple dependencies. And I'm noticing that the month name is on top of the day numbers here, which I don't love. Let's see if we can fix that. So I'm going to go to the edit menu here. And we still have our JSON in this text file. So um, I'm going to do a control F and look for the word month. Okay, so here's the month axis. Looks like there's a value for offset here. Let's try setting that to something. Maybe offset will move it up. I'm just gonna try 15 here. And then let's copy it and paste it in and do the apply button. And that worked out better than I expected. Look at that, and June is up top now. Um, so this is a Gantt chart that is by day, by the way, it is not by week. So if you want it to be by week, you would have to modify the JSON. And I'm not entirely sure how to do that. So we're not going to do that in this demo. And maybe we want our task area here to be a little bit wider as well. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. Um, I'm going to Task column. So I just searched for the word task and signals. I'm not sure what signals are. Let's try changing this to like 200 and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It worked. So there you go. Uh, that's how to make it wider. Uh, like I mentioned, I am a total noob at Deneb, but we're doing pretty well. All right, so that is everything for today. Please check out David Bocci's GitHub because it's super cool, and I hope this was useful to you. Thank you for watching.